Well, there's something special about Atlantic salmon found in certain rivers in eastern Prince Edward Island. DNA testing has revealed that the salmon may actually be an ancient strain of the fish not found anywhere else. An island scientist is calling it the first good news in 300 years for Atlantic salmon. And research is now underway to find out more about these unique fish. Island Morning's Nancy Russell wades into this scientific mystery and what it could mean for the future of Atlantic salmon. So this summer we're trying to uh, put together, trying to collect some data and try to put together some information about our ancestral run. Fred Chevery has spent the last couple of decades helping to restore watersheds in the Surrey area. He's the watershed coordinator with the Surian area branch of the PEI Wildlife Federation. They didn't know it at the time, but Chevery and his team of volunteers may have saved this ancestral strain of salmon. My name is Scott Rollison. I'm a PhD candidate uh, working with the Canadian Rivers Institute at the University of Prince Edward Island. It seems to me that it's the first good news story for Atlantic salmon in the last 300 years. Scott Rollison is part of a team of biologists working with Fred Chevery and a number of other partners including the Atlantic Salmon Federation, the Federal Department of Fisheries and Oceans, the Mi'kmaq Confederacy, and the Abiguit First Nation. Rollison says no one was out looking for this ancestral strain of salmon. They just happened to turn up in DNA testing done as part of a massive study of Atlantic salmon. This study was a part of a, a broader 150 rivers that were surveyed and over 10,000 fish. So it was actually just a byproduct of the research. And the authors came to us here on PEI and said, hey, hey listen, maybe uh, this is worthy of a, a second look. 2011, we uh, sent some fish away, did some fin clipping and sent them away from North Lake and Cross River in our area. And I think they were sent from three other rivers in Prince Edward Island, plus various rivers in New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Quebec, eastern United States and other parts. And the fin clippings were all sent to Laval University. And from there, there was a, a DNA testing on them to show how closely the fish were all related. And they found that the cluster of fish in Atlantic Canada was very closely related, except two rivers, North Lake and Cross River, the two in our section. As the research was published, it came to show that specific rivers on Prince Edward Island retained a genetic signature that was unique to Prince Edward Island and Prince Edward Island only. The discovery of the ancient strain of salmon comes at a time when Atlantic salmon stocks are in trouble. Atlantic salmon stocks are plummeting in Atlantic Canada over the last number of years, so much so that uh, in New Brunswick it's an uproar. Uh, Gail Shea announced a panel to do uh, a study in all Atlantic provinces, and we, at the opposing side of the thing, is we're showing an increase in, like why? Why is our stocks holding its own and increasing since 2008 while stocks are plummeting in the rest of Atlantic Canada? Fred Chevery says the rivers in the Surrey watershed have at least one key difference from salmon rivers in other parts of PEI. The two rivers where the ancestral salmon have been found have never been restocked with salmon from the Miramichi. Most of the rivers of PEI are dwindling, so what has happened over the last number of years is that uh, fishermen wanted fish back in their rivers in June, July, August, so fly fishermen could fish them. So they found out a number of years ago that they found a tributary in the Miramichi called Rocky Brook, and the fish came back there in June naturally. So what they did was they started collecting broodstock from that river and introducing to all other rivers in Atlantic Canada to have fish back in the rivers earlier. So our fish come back in probably late October, November, December, and the situation is our fish come back when the water levels are high in our rivers, and as as a result, maybe that's what on those rivers when the fish were intended to come back. Maybe they were never intended to come back in some of those rivers uh, when water levels were low, water temperatures was high. Yeah, and it's easy for us to sit here now and say, you know, that was a foolish thing to do. But uh, at that point in time, everybody was working in honest, trying to uh, do the best thing for the resource. And um, is another factor that got us to where we are today. In reality, it wasn't the genetic influx from a foreign river that caused the extinction of the salmon in these rivers. It was the decades or centuries leading up to that point where there was no salmon left and then the need to stop. 
Scott Rollison says it's now time for some scientific research to find out more about what he calls the heritage salmon. There's a few irons in the fire there. One glaring question is is how widely we know they're in two rivers, uh, North Lake Creek and Cross River. Are they isolated to the Surrey area? How widely are they distributed? And and furthermore, we need to know more about the biology and uh, life history of the salmon in these rivers. One hope is that we will actually be able to track these young salmon as they migrate to sea and compare their movements to other salmon across the region. So we have a North Lake Creek set up as a trap, and we try to collect some smolts coming down this spring. So we spent a couple of nights up there. So uh, we caught some coming down, determined their dates of their run, the size of the smolts, the weight of the smolt. The Atlantic Salmon Federation has been tracking Atlantic salmon. Um, whenever baby salmon leave their natal streams, they migrate to the Atlantic Ocean off of Greenland. We'd like to tag some fish with acoustic tags in North Lake and Cross River and uh, send a large number of them out into the Gulf and using uh, the receivers that Atlantic Salmon Federation have in the Strait of Belle Isle and the Cabot Strait and to see if those fish pass through those receivers and see if they actually do go to Greenland and uh, if they do, well we know they follow the other fish and if not maybe they have a whole different migratory route which would be totally new signs. Scott Rollison says the new ancestral strain of salmon could be part of solving the current crisis in salmon rivers, here on PEI and possibly throughout the region. If these salmon do well in PEI rivers, this heritage strain, then going forward, maybe we can look at, A, why are these salmon doing better in these rivers? And then does it make sense to use this stock as our our brood stock for rehabilitating other salmon rivers across the island? It makes sense to me. To us, it's a real big dig deal because maybe your approach to restocking salmon is wrong. Like maybe we are going about it the wrong way. If we can find more information about our fish in our rivers in this area, then it probably could answer a lot of questions for other fish in other rivers in the maritime provinces. There's a buzz about this project that is a great reason for optimism in Atlantic salmon conservation on PEI. Let's move the discussion from how did we get here to where do we go from here. For Island Morning, I'm Nancy Russell, near Surrey. Thanks very much, Nancy. And you can see a short video about the ancient Atlantic salmon. It's on our CBC Prince Edward Island Facebook page.